Chats. I'm Rob, and today I have a special guest. We have a webcomic artist, writer, Mark Mullaney. Mark, thank you so much for being with me today. Uh, thank you for having me on here. This is uh, I'm looking forward to being able to talk about this project I've got going on. Yeah, man, I'm I'm excited. So tell us about yourself. Um, well, so I'm I'm going to kind of break the fourth wall a little bit because we were just talking before this about uh, you were suggesting treat it like I'm it, pitching to people in Artist Alley at a, at a Comic Con. But um, for my case, I uh, I don't actually go to a lot of Comic Cons because I'm uh, cripplingly cripplingly terrified of people. The last time I went to a con, I hid under the table until my partner showed up to run the booth for me. Um, so I'm not sure how I would sell myself. Um, I mean, I'm 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 an artist and an animator uh, living in Boston. Um, I'm currently doing a Kickstarter. We're going to talk about a Kickstarter I have going on for uh, my own creator-owned series, uh, Ninja Bear, which I do is like a, it's like a web comic, but it also has been printed a couple of times through Red Stylo Media. Uh, and essentially, what we're what we're looking to do is is right now uh, try to get the first volume of the last four years worth of comics printed uh, and into like one self-contained master book. Um, but outside of that stuff, I, I, I've worked, um, I've done animation for television. I've done uh, animation for the corporate marketing world, which is super fun and exciting. Um, and I do a lot of, you know, graphic design, just basically like an all around general creative, I, you know, mercenary type who will do anything creative for money, <laughs> if that helps. Sure, sure. So what is Ninja Bear about? So Ninja Bear is a uh, is is a story. It's a it's a basically the, the story itself is um he's a little bear who is uh, trained as a ninja and he's on a quest to um, f- uncover what happened to his teacher and mentor who uh, disappeared one night and and uh, there's this evil villainous creature called the Black Mage that's behind it and Ninja Bear doesn't really know what this what the deal is with him but. It's sort of like so he's trying to hunt this guy down to you know, confront him for all of his bad doings and find out what happened to his mentor. Is his mentor still alive? Uh, and on the way, he meets a lot of he goes to a lot of, uh, you know, places, interesting places. He meets a lot of strange people and he fights a lot of monsters. It's kind of um, it's almost I would describe it almost as like uh, Hellboy meets Legend of Zelda with like a dash of gummy bears thrown in there from, you know, the old Disney cartoon days. Yeah, man, that all sounds great to me. Uh, <laughs> I'm a huge Hellboy fan, a huge Zelda fan. And uh, you know what? I, I think the, the Gummy Bear demographic was uh, not really my demographic. But at the same time, I know people love it, and I totally get what you're going for with this. I'll try not to sing the theme song because we have a limited time here. So do you ever take – we're going to go off subject uh, of Ninja Bear for a second. We're going to definitely talk Ninja Bear more. But uh, do you ever take – commissions or since you don't really do comic cons is that something that really comes into your world so um a lot of what i a lot of what i do professionally is is freelance work for clients and stuff um i've never actually part of this kickstarter we do have a couple of reward tiers where um i will you you, if you pledge the tier you can make me do a commission of whatever you want depending on how high tier you go i don't Normally, I've never really been the kind of guy. I've always been really bad at self promotion, so I've never done. I haven't done a lot of like commission work and stuff like that. Um, so I, I don't have a huge experience in that. It's actually I'm, I'm kind of looking forward to dipping my toe in that in, in kind of a big way with this Kickstarter because um, we did uh, we got a, a couple of pledges just in the last 24 hours of people going up to the top tier to get like a full color commission from me. Um, so it's going to be fun. I'm, I'm thinking about like recording the process as I draw those and putting it up online somewhere. So, yeah, you absolutely should. And if you do, we'll share it on our, on our Facebook page. So definitely, uh, if you're going to do that, let us know. And I know people listening to this would be really interested in that. Oh, cool. Yeah, I absolutely will. I'll, I'll tag you. <laughs> cool. So with Ninja Bear, you said you started as a webcom. You've done some printing through, uh, through your publisher. Uh, this time you're collecting the entire series. Plus, if you if I read the Kickstarter right, you've got some extras in there too, some chapters that were never published before. Um, is this a self-contained story? Like, if we read Volume One of Ninja Bear, is it self-contained? And then you go, okay, Volume Two is it like a new story in the Ninja Bear storyline? 
Yeah, essentially every issue um, is a self-contained story. It's like a it's like a stop on his journey. It's almost kind of like episodic, like a like a Saturday a Saturday morning adventure cartoon or something from back in the day when they did that kind of thing. Where uh, every episode, every every issue is you know he he comes into a new place and he meets a new t- a person or he meets a new group of people and he faces he's confronted with a different a new problem and it all. There's the overarching theme throughout of his his main quest. So the funny thing is when I was I created Ninja Bear, the concept of it back in college, and it's been this thing. I have a lot of ideas that rattle around in my head and never do anything with them. Um, with Ninja Bear, I had all these ideas. Uh, it was actually that's where the Hellboy influence comes from, because Mignola pulls a lot of his uh, story influences from real life mythology and folklore. So that's what I was doing. I read a lot of mythology and folklore and. I take these creatures and I start putting them in, working them into stories. So I had all these ideas for stories that stand alone with this character, but there was nothing, I had no overarching idea of how to tie them together. So the first Ninja Bear that actually was drawn was 2016. I decided to take one of those stories, just do a 12 page comic just for myself and post it online. And then Enrica, my publisher, saw it and she was like, "Um, we're going to do something with that. And I was like, all right, you go right ahead and do that. So since then, we've been you know, trying to produce as much material as possible. Um, I mean, there's not like tons of it. I'm not super as prolific as I'd like to be because I get pulled in so many different directions with different projects that I have to work on. But uh, I try to do as much with it as I can. Um, So essentially, yeah, if you jump in like the first quote unquote, the first issue, which isn't the first story that came out, um, but issue one is sort of the first attempt I made at like establishing that there is an overarching story here. And this is just one episode where Ninja Bear encounters these uh, creatures called the Odo, which come from Iroquois, Native American mythology. Uh, they're, they're dwarf-like creatures that live underground, and they use magic to keep these earth demons asleep and contained because if the earth demons wake up, they create earthquakes. And so you can kind of guess where that story goes if earth demons are involved. Yeah, right. Um, there's you know, fighting monsters and stuff underground. So, um, you know, so he goes through that adventure, and then... He moves on. It's almost, and then, you know, also that's where the video game thing comes in, Legend of Zelda. You know, Link goes to, like, the new, like, realm uh, as the story progresses. He goes to the next temple, and there's always a story around, a self-contained story around that temple that is part of the overarching story of him going to find, find Ganon or whatever. Um, but he has to solve that village's crisis first, you know, right, and deal right. with that particular monster. So. It's it's yeah. So every issue is self-contained story that is a piece of a larger narrative, um, and you get little hints at what's coming down the line. So, so and I'm still all kind of piecing it together in my head myself. So I'm just, <laughs> right, as, I'm just as amazed as everybody else. So so uh, who would you say are the? I don't want to just say artists. I don't want to just say writers, but like the creators that you say would say are the biggest influence on you. Um, I mean, that's hard to say because there's so many. There's so many different artists and writers and, and, and stuff that I read and follow and like, and um, it can even, I, I can be inspired by, like, for example, my, my number one, uh, you know, inspiration was Charles Schultz and the Peanuts comic strip. And nothing I've ever done is, can even be compared to anything that Schultz did. But it was, it was, that was what kind of gave me that connection to want to start, you know, drawing and telling stories in that, you know, way as a child, but I never borrowed anything from it. So it's, it's kind of hard to say there's a lot of, I mean, I have a lot, I have a, a shelf of books behind me right now. I mean, you know, obviously I said Mignola. Um, I actually pull a lot of, uh, you know, a video game artwork, um, not just from the legend of Zelda, but from other games too. Uh, you know, there's a lot of like stuff like that, but those, I don't even know those artists names, but I recognize their work when I see it in different things. Um, you know, Jamie Hewlett is, a uh, book right behind me that comes to mind right now, you know, from the gorillas and tank girl. I mean, his, his stuff is fantastic. It gives me something to inspire to. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, 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 that's a, that's like the hardest question for me to answer. Okay. It's like I, it's I going think you on gave a fair answer, man. I think that was fair. <laughs> so if this was your dream con, I'm going to make you an even harder question. This is your dream con and you've gotten over your fear. You're out from under the table. Who would you be most excited to meet? Uh, see that that's that's the thing because it's also hard for me to say I want to meet somebody that I respect because it, it's like you come know, on man give me one give me that. one that, that <laughs> it's your dream con like if if they showed up you'd pass out 
I mean, yeah, there's plenty of guys like that. I mean, if you're talking like a Comic-Con, if I just want to be like a Comic-Con nerd, I'd say going somewhere where I can meet like a guy like Bruce Campbell or something like that would be uh, that would be pretty great. Um, you know, I'm a big I'm a big horror movie fan, too, which you do see a little bit of that uh, seeps into Ninja Bear. So those kinds of like actors and stuff that you see voice actors as well, uh, you know, so I don't I mean, yeah, there's tons of people. OK, so it's it's literally you get out from under the table and it's everybody. But Bruce Campbell might be number one. Yeah, no, he'd, he'd definitely be a guy. I'd, I mean, I'd get flustered. I'm flustered right now, but uh, <laughs> you're doing great. So, so with so many cons canceling and postponing, what is the best way that you can think of to support other creators? I mean, the social media is definitely the way to go um, in terms of because I mean, the comic cons were all about this way for artists to connect with each other and to connect with their uh, fans back at a time when we didn't have the internet as widespread as it is now. So, um, you know, it's still a great opportunity for people who are, you know, into socializing to be able to go out and actually go on a little mini vacation and have fun. But, you know, if you, if you can't, if that's not, if that's not an option as it is now, like social media is definitely the way to go. Uh, Instagram, I think is one of the best social media platforms for artists to be on right now. Um, you know, DeviantArt was a, was a good one a few years ago, uh, but I, I find myself using it less and less. Tumblr as well, um, because there's so much other stuff around it. Instagram, I'd have to say, is probably my favorite because um, it's literally just you just you can slap up a picture super fast. You put a little bit of text in there if you want to, and then it just goes out and people can look at it. And I mean, it's not the most uh, it's not the perfect way to look at artwork in a tiny little square on your cell phone, but um, in terms of connecting with the artists, I think Instagram is, is one of the best. Um, probably, um, oh God, what's that other one? Pinterest is probably another one as well for in terms of just sharing images and being able to like look at people's artwork. So what would you say is the best way for people to check out your work? Instagram is where I'm the most active uh, these days. I've done, uh, over the years, I've, I've run the gamut from a blog spot blog to Tumblr to Facebook, MySpace, you know, all that kind of nonsense. Um, but I, I find... Even nowadays with all the, I mean, like right now I even have a website of my own, which I actually, because I, you had had me send you a questionnaire and I actually forgot that I actually have my own website. It's markmalaneycreative.com. Uh, that's more of like my work site. So if you wanted to like hire me to make an animated video for your company or something, you can go check out my work there. But um, Instagram is really where I post the most like up to date stuff that I happen to be working on, whether it's promoting my Kickstarter or um, you know, uh, sharing Inktober drawings in October where I'm not the most consistent, you know, with stuff like that. But, uh, you know, so I'd say Kickstarter, which I gave you the list on. So it's, um, I want to say my, it's agent Mark 85 is my Instagram, I think. <laughs> cool. Yeah, I, I think it is too. Uh, you know what, we're going to put all this stuff in the show notes anyway, so people can find it there. Uh, and if they follow one, hopefully we'll start get everything tagged properly. So they'll be able to find you no matter what, but it's, it's good to hear that, uh, explanation out there too because some people are auditory learners so before we get to the social media links and all that uh you've got a kickstarter going on can you give a few details like when does it end what's the goal what are we where are we at on it um yeah so the kickstarter we actually kickstarter first off i just want to give a shout out to kickstarter um they're they've since they've come on around They've always seemed to be putting a lot of effort into trying to be the best platform they can be for the creators that, that use them to get their stuff made. Um, and they've really kind of changed that landscape of like, you don't need to go to like a guy that has money and let him have control over you in order to get something out there. You can just go straight to the people. Um, and it, to that effect, with this whole coronavirus thing, uh, Kickstarter has allowed uh, creators to... Um, to apply to have their campaigns extended a week, which was great for us. At the time, we were really worried about where we were at, but we're actually doing a lot better now. And we may, quote unquote, hit our goal before our actual official first deadline. But our deadline now is April 17th um, with the extension. And as of today, we're 80 percent funded. So uh, we're getting closer and closer to, you know, the 100 percent, the, 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 the much needed 100 percent. Um, and we do have some cool stretch goals planned. So I'm really hoping we get to 100 uh, percent in a reasonable amount of time so we can really push to get some of these other stretch goals, um, you know, up there. Uh, but we also have been doing a lot of add on stuff as well. Like today, we just announced um, that I, we did T-shirts. We designed T-shirts for the Kickstarter. So if you go on to the campaign and pledge now, you can you can also grab a T-shirt as well as a copy of the book and all the other 
weird nonsense that we've plugged in there as well. So the best way to find you on Kickstarter is to look up Ninja Bear and and it's Ninja Bear Volume 1 is the title, right? Yeah, Ninja Bear Volume 1. You can also just go to uh, the Ninja Bear, uh, ninjabearcomic.com um, and there's a link right there on the front page to go right over to the Kickstarter. I think that's the easiest way to remember it. And ninjabearcomic.com is a great place to go, actually, because if you're unfamiliar with it or you want to kind of see if it's worth your time, um, the entire archive, basically, it's the, 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 the way the comic is set up is I draw it for print. So it's like as a full page and then I cut it up and I run it as a web comic. Um, so you get like every, every Tuesday I post up like a portion of the story and I, I edit it, I cut it up in a way so that every strip, even though it's a part of a, like a full page, it's punchy enough where it's worth reading it for that day. Um, so if you, you can go online right now and actually as of last two, uh, two Tuesdays ago, everything that's going to be in collected in the volume one that we're kickstarting right now is has run on the website so the website is all up to date with the volume one that we're kickstartering and just last tuesday we started an all new never before seen um storyline which is uh as a uh, it's it's you know in two weeks it's two weeks going so it's two strips of it up so you can go and see the ongoing storyline and you can go back through the archives and see all the other weird sh- stuff that i've drawn over the years cool uh one more thing why don't you if you know it Throw out your social media one more time. Uh, I know you've got Twitter. I know you've got Instagram. If you don't know them, I know them. So <laughs> if you know them, let's hear them. Yeah, no, I have um, I have them right here. I, I should have just pulled this email up that I sent you. Um, so um, you can find Ninja Bear on Twitter at Ninja Bear Comic. Um, and then you can find me, like my personal Instagram, because I don't have a separate one for Ninja Bear. Uh, my personal Instagram is AgentMark85, but like 85% of what I post is about Ninja Bear. Um and then you can find Ninja Bear on Facebook at Ninja Bear Comic, um, you know, on Facebook if you look that up. I have a Twitter account as well that I hardly ever use, uh, which is Mars with a Z, M A R Z eighty five on Twitter. Um, but I, you know, I hardly ever go on there, so I, I, you know, I wouldn't recommend it. You also have a YouTube channel, Agent Mark eighty five, and I do. One last shout out: the website is ninjabearcomic.com. Yeah, the YouTube one I threw up too because you had on the list. But like again, there's not a there's some stuff in there if you want to see like old animation stuff that I've done. Um, but it's not again not something super updated very often. That's okay. This is the audience that's going to like something like that. So for <laughs> yeah, sure, there's some interesting things to go there. up there. You can go up and see some of the cringy things I did back in college, and you can see some of the slightly less cringy things I've done uh, since I got out of college in the last ten years. Well, the stuff I saw looked all fantastic. So. Uh... Mark, it's been a real pleasure. Thank you so much for being on. And please, everybody, if you support Kickstarters, this is a good one. This is one you want to support. Help them reach this goal. Thanks again, Mark. Yeah, thank you so much. You can find Alley Chats on Facebook by searching for at Alley Chats. You can also visit us at our webpage, smgpods.com slash Alley Chats for links to all our episodes and other cool stuff. One easy way to support our show is to rate and review Alley Chats wherever you listen to your podcasts. Those ratings really help us out and help others find our show as well. Alley Chats is produced and edited by Rob Southgate for Southgate Media Group. Be sure to subscribe to Alley Chats because you definitely don't want to miss an episode. Thanks again to our affiliate sponsors, Hunt a Killer and Tweaked Audio. Links to them are on our webpage and in the show notes. This wouldn't be possible without them. Our theme song is by Benny and the No Goods. Check out their awesome music at bennyandthenogoods.bandcamp.com. If you're an artist or writer or creative type that would have a table at an artist alley and would like to be on Alley Chats, message us through the Facebook page or email us directly at southgatemediagroup at gmail.com and we'll set up an interview. Thanks for listening, everybody. We'll be back tomorrow with another fantastic show.